Hi guys, Danielle from Danielle's Homemade Products. I'm making some chocolate biscottis. So right now in my stand mixer, and I've got you guys really close. Let me move you out just a little bit. There we go. My stand mixer, I've got one cup of sugar and one stick of butter or a half a cup of butter. And I do, I am using unsalted. And I'm gonna just cream this together. And in a separate bowl, I have two cups of flour, half a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, two teaspoons of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just gonna go ahead and combine this together as well. And I realize you can't see me doing that, but I promise you that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up just a little bit more. My butter wasn't quite soft, soft. I did put it in the microwave and warm it up a little bit, but it's still probably a little bit harder than it should have been. So I'm going to turn this up, but I'm going to pause the video so you guys don't have to hear all that noise. Okay, guys, my butter and sugar are creamed together. I'm just going to scrape the bottom of the bowl, make sure there is nothing that's not incorporated. And since my butter was still pretty cold, I had to beat the tarnations out of it. You're doing it by hand, it probably would hurt. Sorry, I'm trying to move this to a little bit better of a position. And now I'm going to add in two eggs. I'm gonna add them in one at a time and wait until the first one's incorporated before I add the second one in. And try to get all of it into the bowl and not on the counter. so I can get in incorporated a little bit quicker. And I'm also gonna add in two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Mine's just the cheap stuff. I need to get some good stuff. But for now, this will work. Trying to make sure everything's mixed in now because once I start adding the dry ingredients, I don't want to over mix it. So I'm gonna go ahead and scrape down my bowl again. It always has that funny curdled look. But it smells darn good and tastes darn good once it's done. So I guess that's all that's important. Okay, I'm gonna give this a fast mix real quick. 
make sure everything is incorporated together. And now if you wish to add them would be a good time to hand stir in some walnuts, almonds, whatever kind of nuts you like. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the mixer. And I'll be right back. Sorry guys, I needed to grab my sheet pan. Get all of this yummy stiff dough. Sorry if you had an elbow in the view. I can't see from this side. Now this is a very stiff, sticky dough. My spatula is just wanting to bend. It's not wanting to actually scrape the sides of the bowl. Okay. So I'm going to take my dough out. Like I said, you can see it's really thick, really kind of like really thick brownie batter. I guess it's, it reminds me of brownies that have been cooked and getting ready to make cake balls with or something. But I'm going to divide this in half and make two loaves that are about 10 uh, by 4 by 1. And so I'll be, I'll be right back. I can't do that on camera and not make a mess. I'll be right back. Okay, so I finally got it all out of the bowl. And I gave up and ended up just using my hands at one point because that's that thick sticky. So I'm just going to gently shape these. And try to keep as much of the dough on the tray as I can. It's not sticking to my hands too bad. I guess I didn't really separate this as evenly as I thought I did. But that's all right. There are my two logs. I am going to put these in a, sorry, I should have told you before, preheated 300 degree oven. And I'm going to cook them for 35 minutes and then I will pull them out to cool for five to 10 minutes before I slice them into one inch pieces and then put back in the oven for roughly another 35 minutes. So I'll be back once they come out for the first time. Um, I had to go get Sky from school and let her know that the baby ducks came back. You'll see that um, video will be posted right before this one, but these guys, this is ready to slice and then put back into the oven for a bit. So I'm just gonna try to gently cut it into slices. A little bit of an angle. Gotta make them look purdy. If they fall apart, it's okay. They'll still be scrumptious. And then I'm just gonna set these cut side down back on the same tray I cooked them on. And then they'll go back into the oven for at least another 30 minutes. Um, they were supposed to bake originally 35 minutes. I only had them in there for 30 minutes because I had to go get Sky from school. So I'm going to put them in there for 30 minutes again and see how they look at that point. Um, they probably would have been a little drier if I had actually cooked them the extra five minutes. So I may bake them for 35 to make up for that five minutes and dry them out just a little bit more. Stop it! I already did a video on it. She brought peanut butter inside. Love you peanut butter. Yes, I do. <laughs> peanut butter. And then the other one's in the breeze right still. Jelly beans. Okay, take peanut butter back outside. Jelly bean is the yellow one. <laughs> peanut butter doesn't sound very happy. Stop. 
you do definitely want to use a serrated edge when you're cutting these. See, they're kind of kind of falling apart a little bit, but that's okay because those little pieces are good too. And I am the horriblest want person at cutting number one in a straight line or evenly the same size. And this one I know is a little bit bigger, but I'm going to go ahead and leave that like it is. I had to get that second loaf cut. Looks like it said it was only supposed to make 16, but I think I'm going to end up getting more than that. Oh, I bet you she's bringing jelly bean inside. Hi, yep. jelly bean. Hold on a second, kiddo. Okay. You are annoying. Stop that. This is jelly bean. <laughs> okay, take jelly bean back outside. Please stop. Sorry for the arm shot. We've got our iced tea I mix and lemonade mix ready <laughs> right there because we use it quite often. Um, I had sent Sky a message with a picture of the, the baby ducks to let her know that they had come back had wandered back over here and I, she didn't get it um, until after she already saw that they were here. So when we pulled up, I told her there was a surprise in the breezeway for her. And she of course goes running and I hear, yay! And yeah, she just cracks me up. She loves animals so much. Um, she would have a full farm if I let her. Even if we lived in an apartment, she'd still have a full farm. Yes, yes I would. <laughs> she is very much an animal lover, so. Yeah, see the ends are a little crunchier like they're supposed to be, but that's okay. In the end, they'll still all taste good. So I'm gonna put these guys turn here around here. I'm gonna put these guys back in the oven for another half hour and I will come back once I pull them out back. So my cookies are cooled, my biscottis are cooled, and I did, took some chocolate chips, added a little bit of oil to it, and I'm going to dip them. I see they're nice and crunchy. Okay, I'm just going to let that set up. I was afraid I'd made too much chocolate. Might not have enough. Might have to melt some more. Anyway, y'all yeah, get the point. Dip it in the chocolate and then let it set up. And I'm gonna dip the baby one in. Because I gotta try it. Oh yeah, nice and crunchy and yummy. This will be yummy in the coffee tomorrow. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment below what your favorite flavor would be of biscotti or what your favorite stirrings would be. And I will talk to you later.